Some people experience neck or back pain as a fleeting problem, but for many, the pain lingers, becoming an agony almost impossible to bear. Neck and back pain are fast becoming an epidemic in which there is no immunity. Today, the most common disorder presenting to spinal surgeons is a herniated or prolapsed intervertebral disc. In these cases, the disc bulges or ruptures, either partially or totally, posteriorly or posterolaterally, and press on the nerve roots in the spinal canal or foramina. However, research shows that a healthy disc does not herniate as easily as previously believed. In fact, Mechanically induced herniations of a healthy disc can only be accomplished in a controlled laboratory setting by mechanical forces larger than those that are ever normally encountered. In most experimental tests, the vertebral body failed rather than the disc. So how does a disc herniate? According to recent medical research, some degenerative changes must be present before a disc can herniate. Disc degeneration occurs when there is an increased intradiscal pressure, which results from increased or improper load-bearing activities, such as a poor sitting posture. When the intradiscal pressure increases, the disc loses its hydrostatic behavior. The disc's hydrostatic ability is derived from proteoglycan molecules, which are the disc's super sponge-like materials capable of attracting and holding large amounts of water inside the disc. These molecules are building blocks of the aggregate molecules that form the major structural component of the disc. In a healthy disc, up to 100 proteoglycan aggregate molecules combine on a long piece of hyaluronic acid to form the giant proteoglycan aggregate molecule. The continued load-bearing activities that increase the intradiscal pressure have been shown to affect the disc in three ways. One, it forces nutrients such as amino acids, glucose, water, and oxygen out of the disc and prevents new nutrients from entering the disc. As a result, the disc cells are malnourished and unable to continue the production of the proteoglycan molecules. Two, it breaks down the existing larger proteoglycan aggregate molecule into much smaller proteoglycan molecules, which then are easily leached out, creating a proteoglycan deficiency within the disc. And three, it affects the elastin production by decreasing the inward diffusion of nutrients, which in turn decreases the proteoglycan production. Elastin is the chemical binding that holds the annular fibers tightly together. Normal daily activities break this elastin bond, and if our disc doesn't have enough nutrients diffusing inward, the elastin cannot replenish, making the annular fiber susceptible to injury. To summarize, with the loss of proteoglycans, the osmotic pressure falls and the disc is less able to maintain hydration under load, leading to premature degeneration. A degenerated disc is a weak disc in which the annular fibers easily buckle, or worse, tear, allowing the nucleus to herniate or rupture through. We hope you found this segment informative. Please check out our other videos by visiting us online at www.nsdtherapy.com. If you have any questions or comments, please send us an email at info at nsdtherapy.com.